We recently bought the Aperture 300X bicolor light and the Nanlite Forza 300 bicolor light. And we bought them at the same time. And the main reason I actually got this Nanlite because I just wanted to save some money. But I wanted to see and hopefully help you guys figure out, is saving money actually worth it to take a product that maybe isn't as good? For those of you who don't know, I'm kind of an Aperture fanboy. I've always loved Aperture lights and I get excited every time they launch a new light. For a long time, we've had the Aperture 120Ds and the 120D Mark IIs, and we wanted to beef up our kit. We have a lot of projects where we need more light, and so we bought the Aperture 300X. After doing some more research, I realized that the Nanlite Forzas had a lot of similar traits to the Aperture lights, and they used to be almost at the exact same price as Aperture, but for whatever reason, they dropped substantially, especially on Black Friday. The question I'm looking to answer, is it worth saving money buying something cheaper at the risk of not having as high of quality? All right, so what are the things that I don't like about this light? Well, overall, I feel like Aperture has a better design aesthetic. I really love how they've built these ballasts for the Aperture 300 lights, and they just honestly work really well. It is super compact in relation to this beast of a ballast. Really interesting design. I'm sure that the actual product designers have a reason for why they designed it in this unique format. This power brick actually comes off so that you can access the V-mount ports. Now, the second thing I don't like is how they attach the light to a light stand. So Aperture has this really great way where it locks in, it has a special plate on the ballast when I started taking this out of the package, I hadn't seen what the actual clamp looked like, but I've had multiple times where I started tightening this on the actual light stand. And when I tightened it, maybe this pin wasn't perfectly in position, but this would just burst open. But it also just has a little groove that hooks on the back of the ballast. Now, most of the time, we're not gonna be bumping into our light stands. So that's not a deal breaker but I don't feel like a lot of thought went into this. The next negative is how they have the locking mechanisms on the sides of this Nanlite. So it uses two instead of the single one that the Aperture has. And Nanlite still feels like it's in an early iteration of design. These, you have to loosen both of them. It's got the different teeth, then you have to lock both of them into place. So imagine you have a soft box on this and you're trying to do this by yourself quickly, it's raised high. It's just a little more difficult. So that's something that I don't feel like was really well thought out. Maybe that was one of the ways that they saved a little money on this product. And then the next thing is fan noise. The fan noise is noticeably louder than the Aperture 300s. And we just find that you're gonna have to deal with some background noise, especially in interviews. I don't think it's unusable. Um, it's definitely usable, but for us, we'd probably use it more in settings where we don't need audio and not make it our main key light. I see the Aperture 300X being our primary key light. Now, this does have a mode where you can switch it into fan off, but that means it will only go up to 15% power. If we turned it on, it would take anywhere from five to 10 seconds to actually turn the light on, which was a lot longer than I expected, whereas the aperture light would actually turn on quickly. Now it does have this little trigger button on top that adjusts the dim and brightness. And we could click that on and off and it would turn it off quicker and on quicker. But if you're actually powering up the light for the first time, it is a bit slow. And then the last one isn't a big one, but the actual power cable that goes to this light fixture is just pretty short and it feels a little cheap compared to the Aperture ones. So let's talk about what I actually do like about this. The first thing I like about it is I think that it's kind of nifty that they have this menu system on top. So in a lot of situations for us where the light would be held on a stand, it's a lot more convenient to be able to look down at that and make the adjustments versus the aperture one, which is on the front. And you can just have to bend down and look to see what you're doing, unless you're connected to the app. 
The second thing that I like is their overall menu system feels a little more robust than the Aperture one. It's a little more straightforward and user-friendly, and it just makes a lot more sense. The next thing I really like is I do feel like they have a killer sleek design on the actual light fixture. If you look at these side by side, it is quite a bit shorter than the Aperture 300. We recently had a situation in our studio where we needed to hang the Nanlite Forza 500, which we also bought, and we needed to hang that overhead with a softbox on it. Now our ceilings in this studio are at eight and a half feet, so we don't have a lot of room, but because this is a little bit shorter, we were able to hang it and hang the softbox and still be able to film a golf bag underneath. And it also is able to send a pin through the side. And that gave us even more room by having it hang from the side instead of just straight down in this position. Though I was clowning on the actual ballast design, one thing that we do like is you can actually set it down flat and still have it plugged in. You plug in from this side versus the aperture one which has its plugs in the bottom. So if you're actually using the unit, you can never set this on the ground like this. It has to be hanging on something. Whereas this one you can set on the ground right next to it if you were in a pinch and wanted to set it to the side and not hang it up. Overall, we haven't seen a huge difference between the quality of light that comes out of these, the amount of light that comes out, the main reason we bought it is we needed more power. We have a lot of product shoots that we do where we just need more light. And if we're not using audio, or if we're not worried about necessarily carrying it all over the place, then it's actually nice to have these extra bright lights that aren't as expensive. One little caveat and something that surprised me when preparing for this video is I went back on to see what the price currently is on B&H and this light now says discontinued. And I went to their website and it sold out. I went to Adorama, I didn't see it at Adorama. I don't know what that means. Part of me, after seeing the price drop on this, on the 500, on their regular 300, I'm curious if maybe Aperture is winning too much and they're having to cancel this whole thing or whether they're going in with a new line of lights, but it does make me a little curious or worried that this line isn't long standing and that it won't be around. That said, you can buy the 300 daylight powered one for $450 right now on B&H. So ultimately at the end of the day, you have to decide which drawbacks are worth it, especially when saving money. There's so many different pieces of camera gear that you can spend money on. Sometimes saving money in one area allows you to spend a little more to get the right gear in another. I hope that this video is helpful. And if you have any questions about these lights or any other things that we've talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.